God bless each and every one of you. Pastor Daryl Cherry here from DC Real Talk Ministries. It's a pleasure to be able to come again tonight and be with you as we go through the book of Revelation. I want to thank you all so much for being so faithful to this and making sure that you're in place or if you miss it for catching up. I just thank God for each and every one of you. And I consider us blessed by being able to come together and to be able to go through Revelation together. This is a perfect time uh, to be in the book. This is a perfect time to study and just learn of him and understand what is going to happen. For wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom and with all I get and get understanding. That's Proverbs 4 and 7. Uh, we are a family and we are here uh, not only to learn, but we're here for fellowship and we're just here for comfort and we're here to uh, just be in the midst of some teaching in all of this. I see some great comments already and I'm excited. Uh, let me just see if I can kind of back up to catch up. Uh, Karen Hodo is here. Samuel Pride is here. God bless you. Amen. Uh, Monique Sirius is here. Amen. Uh, Monique, thank you. Marie Thompson is watching. Sabernia Thompson, God bless you. PJ Gage is in the house once again. And she said, good evening, Pastor, awaiting this lesson. God bless you and your family. Pearl Williams is here. Bless God for her. her. Wendy Drexler Marrero is in the house. Marie Thompson, Alicia Freeman is watching. Uh, Dean Flickup is watching. He's been on it, I mean, on his page. And he's just letting everybody know that he is into what we're doing. I mean, learning of the Lord and just being in place. So I just bless God for uh, that brother there. Pearl Williams, Sean Oakley, Marie Thompson, Donna Woodard, good, God bless you, in her place again. Tamika Tick Ford, Felicia Moore, June Graham, Dwayne Jackson says, good evening, everybody. Samuel Pride's in the house. Uh, Dean Flickup says, good evening, family. Shronda Bell is in the house. India James, uh, Teresa McDonald, Gloria Revel is in the house tonight. Shelly Ann Richardson, Blessed night, everyone. Amen. And it is a blessed night because we can come together and learn of his word. Beatrice Butler. I just thank God. Uh, the folks are in the house. Amen. Tag your friends. If you feel so led to do, let them know that we're here. Angelina Harris. Hello to you. Amen. So we thank God we're going to get started in a few minutes. Nikki, I mean, Mimi Taylor is in the house. I love what you just posted. Amen and bless God. Amen. Thank you, Karen. Bless God. Bless God. Uh, Vanessa Campbell is in the house tonight. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Mimi says hello. And I know it's hard to keep up with everybody's hellos, but if you can, when somebody says hello, just try to jump in on them and say hello back to them. And uh, don't leave them out there if you can. Amen. And I see Wendy's uh, tagging some people and pray that they might be able to to make it. Also, if you see some first time visitors, some names you don't remember that you've never remember seeing before, if they say hello, plot, try to jump in and say hello back to them. Don't leave them hanging. If you can, I know it's hard to keep up with all this scrolling going on and teaching and all that's going on. And uh, But I ask that, you know, we try to make people who haven't been here feel welcome so they may come again. And uh, so we, we bless God. Uh, Tequila Hunter, God bless you. Valerie Dawkins Williams, Margaret Goodrich, Pam Dudley's in the house tonight. Otherwise known on Facebook as DC Dapper. Pam Dudley is here and she's in the house tonight. Let's see, we've got two more minutes. If you haven't had a chance to give a shout out, please do so. This is the time to do it because once I get started, uh, sometimes I'm so distracted. Denise Gray, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Vanessa Campbell's in the house. Amen. Angelina Harris says hello, everyone. Crystal Patterson is in the house. Crystal, God bless you. Glad that you're here with us. Amen. Again, these sessions, uh, again, are not sessions where I'm going to tune up and, you know, that with the stuff the pastor does, he put his hand behind his ear and I'm not going to spin around like a top. These are teaching lessons, so... If you uh, want to take notes, I encourage you to do so. And I encourage you to get your Bible out and have that and read along with us and uh, as we go forward. So let's just kind of use it as a, as a Bible study tool 
and I'm not here to promote myself in any way. I'm, I don't need to be a star. Uh, Elliot B. Davis, God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. Anna Thompson, thank you for being here. Cassandra Pugh says, good evening, everyone. So again, this all works with in conjunction with Bible study, getting our Bibles out. All right, one more minute. We're just about there. We're coming up on five minutes after, and we're going to go ahead on and get started. I bless God for each and every one of you, and I pray that your day has gone well. And let's just continue to pray for our country, for our world. Let's continue to pray for the Lord God to shift this virus. And uh, when he does shift it, let us not uh, go back to the way we used to be, but let us go into a new season with new fervor and new drive and, and new compassion and new spirituality and a new anointing and a fresh anointing uh, and a new uh, zealous effort to, to be in his word more so now, now than, ever we, than we've ever been. Amen. So, all right. Those of you that haven't had a chance, Terry Brown, God bless you. And thank you. Those of you that haven't had a chance to uh, give a shout out, do so now. This is uh, um, the last chance. Amen. So let's pray and get started. Amen. Nicole Scott says, watch party going down. God bless you. Amen. So let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you and we thank you for right now. Thank you for each and every person who's on tonight. We thank you, God, for your anointing, God, that makes teaching easier. We ask, God, that you would be in the midst and ask that you would speak through us through your word. Father God, for I personally don't have anything to present, but God, I am a conduit, God. As you pour through me, God, I will uh, speak to your people. Father God, I'm just going to present your word as it is, and we know that your word will do the convicting. Your word will do the work. We know that there is power in your word, God. One or two words, God, we know can change, God, somebody's life, God. We know that there are 26 letters in the alphabet, and we know those 26 letters are enough to communicate what you would have to communicate to us. We know that those 26 letters in the alphabet create words, God, that are planted in your word that will change lives. Even we don't understand how it's done. We know it's by your anointing and by your power. So we thank you, God, for communication. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you for this time. And we ask, God, that your Holy Spirit would be present to do the work. We love you and we praise you, God. Use us for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bless God for you all tonight. Um, one thing I want to say before we jump in is that the devil carries on his designs by blinding the eyes of men, by extinguishing light and knowledge and promoting ignorance and error. I'm, what I mean by that is if the enemy can blind our eyes by extinguishing the light of knowledge and knowledge, he's able to promote ignorance and error. He first deceives us and then he tries to destroy us. I've come to let you know that the enemy is not your friend and he's out to still kill and destroy and as I study, the more I study God's word, the more I think about the times that his word was available to me back in the day, and I wasn't interested. I was in church, but his word was, I, was, I really didn't have a major interest in studying. I shouted, I played instruments, I preached, but I really didn't have a great interest in his word. I, everything else took precedent, and that's how the enemy deceives us through smoke screens and mirrors those smoke screens and mirrors are used to distract you whenever a musician a magician is getting ready to do a an extensive uh, magic trick they often use smoke and mirrors and that is to distract you so while you're distracted by the smoke and the mirrors the magician can go head on and do whatever they do uh, behind the scenes and it seems like it's instantaneous and you don't see the deception that's in the magic that's that goes forth and the enemy does the same thing poofs he puts some smoke over a situation how many of us have ever been uh in a relationship that found, that went wrong there was smoke and mirrors in the beginning and this person was able to uh give us entertain they were into they temporarily entertained us 
and once these we were caught up in the smoke and the mirrors and once the uh the illumination from the smoke and the mirrors oh i'm talking already the illumination from the smoke and the mirrors disappeared we realized that we were stuck with rollo we realized that we were stuck with tina and and it was a mess and we said oh man this is a mess here you know and that's how the enemy does first he deceives and then he destroys all right our last verse that we read out of revelation 8 and 13 let's just go there real quickly it's the last verse of chapter 8 of revelation it says 8 and 13 amen god bless you my wife so glad that you're on with us love you sweetie revelation 8 and 13 says and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound the three woes that are in this last verse of the chat of the eighth chapter of revelation is going to come up again we're going to see those three woes they that's just not somebody making making noise and just using words those three woes stand for something and we'll we'll see that as we go through revelation tonight those of you that uh have joined me for the first time and you kind of need some catch up uh this particular chapter we are in uh the, the world is in the tribulation period at this time god has already raptured up this the church he's already raptured up the saints the holy ghost that jesus said i must go and leave but i'm going to send you a comforter that comforter was here for the church age uh the new testament age for the age where we are now up until the rapture uh, the Holy Ghost is here to help us. The Holy Ghost is a, uh, leads us. The Holy Ghost guides us. The Holy Ghost gives us insight to his word. The Holy Ghost is a gift to the church. When the rapture comes and the church is taking up, there will be no reason for the Holy Ghost to remain, the Holy Spirit to remain. So the Holy Ghost is going to leave with the church. So when the church is raptured up, when the rapture happens, the Holy Ghost will leave with the church because there's going to be some judgment that's going to take place. And you don't want to be here for that. The church is not going to be here for that because the church isn't going to go through this punishment phase. Only those who did not accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior when the rapture came. Now, anybody who died, you're welcome, Dorothy Williams. That's why I'm glad I'm explaining this because there's some people that needed this. Needed this. Um anybody who dies before the rapture i want i, I got to make it clear i've said it several times but i want to make it clear anybody who dies before the rapture who did not uh, have the lord jesus christ in their heart didn't ask him for forgiveness did not allow him to be the savior of their life uh and they are not going to uh anybody that is still alive when this happens again uh, those people will go into the tribulation period. Okay, anybody who dies before then, before the rapture happens, you're not going to go into the tribulation period. Okay, the tribulation period is going to be horrible beyond imagination. But as I said last night, and I've been saying, if the rapture comes and you're alive and you miss the rapture, your only second chance, your only chance was just second chance is to get saved give god your life during the rapture but you're going to have to give it through much tribulation and through hard trials okay but if you die before the rapture in your sins you don't go through the tribulation period you don't have a second chance you're going to be awakened at the great white throne judgment after the tribulation period has happened after the second coming of christ has happened when he comes down on earth with the church uh after the thousand year millennial reign you're going to show up at the great white throne judgment where God is going to open the book of life and your name is not going to be found in it. And he's going to say, depart from me. And you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire where you will be tormented forever and ever, ever. It's a bottomless pit. And we're going to, we're going to cover that tonight. So that's just to help you all understand that. 
And again, those of you that heard hear, hearing this for the first time or you don't have it all clear, after this session with, or tomorrow or so, replay this, take some notes. You got to understand how this thing is going to happen, okay? All right, let's go ahead. Revelation, the ninth chapter, pull out your Bibles and go with me with this. Let's, let's do it. Revelation 9 and 1 says, and the fifth angel sounded. See, these are all things that are going to take place in heaven. And when it takes place on heaven, judgment with each thing that happens in heaven, it is something that's showing you that something that's going to happen on earth. God bless you, Minister Jermaine Minor. Love you, man. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. God bless you, Minister Minor. Yeah, this, this, is, this is good. We're getting into this. There will be the unnamed star or person. A star is said to fall from heaven. What is this star? Note that the pronoun him is used to refer to this star. It is a person. The word star is used in its symbolic way to refer to a person of fame or high position. Who is this person? Let's note this. He is said to be a star fallen, quote unquote fallen, from heaven to earth. This is past tense. It means that he is already fallen when God gave him the key to the bottomless pit. Revelation 9 and 2, the living Bible says, Then that fifth angel blew his trumpet, watch this, and I saw one who was fallen to earth from heaven. So uh, the, the living Bible, and I believe the NIV and a couple of other, other versions of the of the scripture say who was falling it's it's past tense so this 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 person this creature has already fallen at some point even before this point uh fallen okay this falling star or angel could be satan himself if he's not satan he could possibly be some high-ranking fallen angel uh in the spirit world presently jesus christ has the keys to the bottom of this pit but he gives them to Satan or this whoever this creature is and allows Satan to afflict the earth with his hordes of demons. Why? So that the world of evil men can reap what they have sown. Ladies, the tribulation period is not a place where the church is going to be because this is going to be a place of judgment and torment for those who did not receive him before the, before the rapture. Okay? It's so important. To receive the Lord Jesus Christ now. So, uh, however, the note that God restrains and limits his evil destruction, even as he does in our day and time. Second verse says, let's go there. It says, and he opened the bottomless pit. So this creature, it could be Satan, it could be one of his imps, was given this fallen uh, angel, could have been, was, is given a key uh, from the Lord to. Uh, open up the bottomless pit the second verse says and he opened the bottomless pit watch this and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun watch this and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit it will be opened by the falling angel of satan what is the bottomless pit it is a place where evil spirits and demons are kept until the end of the world their final doom will take place in the lake of fire the place where all those who have rebelled against god are to be condemned all right let's go to the third verse here and there came out of the smoke watch this locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power so I'm going to uh, read these verses. I'm going to explain them to you in detail. Fourth verse says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. 
Now, I will explain this further, but let me just kind of stop right here. So, this key of this bottomless pit is going to be open by the devil or one of his demons. At this point, uh, smoke is going to come up and locusts are going to uh, be released out of this pit and come upon the earth and they will be given power. Now, John was explaining this the, the best he could in terms of what he saw. And he said they, they were as the scorpions, like as scorpions. They kind of look as scorpions, but they're not going to be scorpions, but they're going to look like scorpions. And they're going to have great power. And they're going to be commanded not to touch the grass, because normally locusts eat up the grass and vegetation. But these uh, like scorpion creatures are going to be commanded that they don't hurt the earth, don't hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only they are they 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 are only allowed to hurt to hurt the men, which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. The seal of God in their foreheads was spoken of in past scriptures that we've covered. The seal of God in their foreheads is not the mark of the beast. The seal of God in the foreheads represent the people who have come to Christ during the tribulation period. Remember we read about the 144,000 Jews that are going to be uh, saved during the tribulation period. And one of the main reasons why they're going to be saved during the tribulation period is so they can minister to millions of people who were, were who missed the rapture and that they can turn and turn their lives to God. They're going to have a hidden seal in their foreheads. They're going to have a hidden seal. And that hidden seal, all of those people, those 144,000 people, the millions of people that they're going to minister to, that's going to get saved, and other people are going to get saved during the tribulation period, these creatures that are scorpions uh, that are going to come down are not going to touch any of those people. But any people who have received the mark of the beast, any people who have not received the Lord as their Savior, Jesus Christ, during the tribulation period, they are going to be uh, they are going to be tormented by these creatures. They won't be able to hide anywhere on earth. These creatures have been unctioned to search them out. So let's go further. Let's see what else to say about them. I'm going to read the verses and I'll explain more later on. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. I want you to remember that period of time, five months. So these Creatures, these scorpion creatures have been given a command not to touch the vegetation, not to touch anything green or whatever, but to touch those that didn't have the seal of God in their foreheads. And they are to, they can't kill these people, but they are, have been commissioned to uh, torment these people five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. I don't, well, I'm not going to say how many people have been bit by, uh, stung by a scorpion. But I heard it's very, it's deadly and it's very painful. And, and this is going to be very, God bless you, Captain Renee uh, Fry. This is going to be very, very painful. Sixth verse says, and in those days, men shall seek death and not find it. And shall desire to die and watch this and death shall flee from them. They're going to be so tormented by these creatures when they get stung this this thing is going to be it's going to be so incredible that you're going to want to die i don't know any of you have ever been in pain so much so that you wanted to die i mean that you you just i mean you were just in that kind of pain it, it, it's 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 beyond this kind of pain that you've ever had they're going to, you're going to want to die but you're not going to be able to die the stings are going to be so severe these are people who are hard-headed who took the mark of the beast which is 666 in their hand or their forehead, who have not, uh, or who have not uh, asked the Lord to be in their heart. They're still uh, defiant and won't serve God during this, won't give their life to God during this period. These creatures will seek them out and they will find them. They will find them and they will sting you and they will torment you for five months. You're going to want to die, but you're not even going to be able to die. If that's not judgment, I don't know what is. God bless you, Mom Ball. 
Seventh verse says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. The imagery that John gives here is very frightening. These, these creatures are just frightening. And it says, On their heads were as it were crowns of gold, and their, and their faces were as the faces of men. Eighth verse, And they had hair as hair of women, and their teeth were as teeth of lions. God bless you, Bishop Williams. Ninth says, ninth verse says, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Many of us have seen those night movies where, char or those battle movies. God bless you, Charlene Murray Rose. God bless you, Denise Gray. When you hear those battles, those chariots, and there, there's hundreds of thousands of these chariots, they, and they're, they're going into battle with the horses running and chariots. Are, it's amazing. It's an incredible, uh, deafening sound. We've, we've watched those movies before, those night movies and war movies. And when they, these scorpion-like creatures that look, um, that have the shape of locusts and uh, they were like unto horses and they, they, they had crowns of gold and their faces, they had faces of men and had hair like women and their teeth were like teeth of lions. Uh, when, they, when you hear them, when they come in the vicinity, you will hear them because it's going to be a deafening noise. Tenth verse says, and they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. Remember that again. I'm going to bring that back to you. Dwayne Jackson said the book of Revelation has really opened his eyes. And I pray that it's opened your eyes as well. Verse 11 says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Yeah, there's an angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Both of those names mean destroyer okay both of those names mean destroyer here we go remember i told you to keep the woes in mind verse 12 says one woe is past and behold as bad as everything is that you've heard that we've read up this up to this point so far john says one woe is past that's all one woe okay yeah keep the keep that five months i'm gonna i'm getting ready to explain that to you about these locust creatures one woe is past and behold there are two more woes more hereafter is that what your word says so they're letting you know that uh those woes that we heard those three woes wasn't just there just to be just to be for somebody to say something there's a purpose each woe something's getting ready to happen now god bless you natasha carter thank you for joining us tonight the bottomless pit is literally the pit of the abyss. John states this in Revelation 20, verse 1 through 3, that Satan will be temporarily jailed there during the Lord's reign on the earth. That's going to be during the millennial period, a thousand-year millennial period. Uh, Satan is going to be temporarily jailed in the bottomless pit. The Antichrist, otherwise known as the beast, will ascend out of the pit, in Revelation 11 and 7, and we'll get there, and 17 and 8. It is not the lake of fire, so don't confuse the bottomless pit with the lake of fire. It's just amazing how we didn't understand. You know, we thought hell was everything, but there's hell, there's the bottomless pit, there's a lake of fire. It's just, it's just judgment place after judgment place. So it is not the lake of fire, for the, that is the final prison for Satan and all who follow him. You'll be able to read about that in Revelation 20 and 10. But, that, but part of that is part of that hidden underworld under the Lord's authority. God bless you, B. Regina Williams. Today, the fearsome army described here is already incarcerated, waiting for the hour of their liberation. This fallen star is a person, the king over the beings in the pit, as we read in 9 and 11. 
He does not have complete authority for the key to the pit had been given to him before he could loose his army. This star is probably Satan and the army is his demons. One of the names for Satan is Lucifer, which means brightness. He also is compared to the morning star. Jesus said to his disciples, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said that in Luke 10 and 18. When the pit is open, smoke is going to emerge as through the door of the furnace as it is loosened. Jesus compared hell to the furnace of fire, an image that ought to make people stop and think before we joke about it. The smoke polluted air and dark it will, is going to darken the sun, which has already been darkened when the fourth trumpet sounded. They can't afford for uh, the sun to be darkened anymore. But when this pit is when this pit is open, the smoke that emanates from the pit is going to darken the sun even more. And when the sun is darkened, that is going to have an effect on everything, on life and and and, and vegetation and and all of that. You know how much uh, the world depends on the sun, and that's why the enemy, even today, tries to block the S O N from our lives because the enemy knows uh, just like the earth needs the S-U-N, we need the S-O-N. And if he can block us with smoke and mirrors from his pit of deception, he can keep us uh, blocked from Jesus and to be able to receive from him. These are not literal locusts because locusts do not have scorpion-like they don't have scorpion-like stings in their tails. These creatures do not devour the, the green vegetation, as I said. In fact, they are prohibited from doing that. This demonic army is given the assignment of tormenting all of those who have not been protected by the seal of God. Again, I've already told you who uh, those people are who were protected during the tribulation period of the seal of God. That's why I said you... If you find yourself where you've missed the rapture and you find yourself in the tribulation period because right after the rapture starts a seven-year tribulation period. If you find yourself where the church folk have been raptured up, the Holy Spirit is gone and you are in the tribulation period. Again, do not take the mark of the beast. Do not accept that 666. It's going to be most likely... Uh, in the form of a chip that's going to be placed in your hand or on your forehead. And uh, that chip is eternal damnation. You have rejected Christ at that point. So no matter how long you physically live during the tribulation, whenever you decease, whenever you die during the tribulation, you will be judged. You will go to hell. You will be in eternal torment. You will be thrown into the lake of fire. Okay, the five-month thing. Here we go. The normal lifespan of locusts that are on earth today is about five months. Their lifespan is normally from May to September. And this is the length of time that the judgment will last. That's why the scripture says about five months. Isn't that amazing? That a, a locust on earth, their lifespan is five months. And here in the scriptures it says... That is going to give them uh, the, 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 the time to torment uh, with their scorpion tails and all that five months. That's what I'm saying. God is it's all there. You just got to read. It's all there. Okay? And these demons will sting people and thus create such pain that their victims will actually want to die. But death will flee from them. Yeah, I see y'all understand. That's why I said this. I'm glad you're following me and not reading ahead and jumping ahead and preaching ahead. Because there's so much that you may not understand. God bless you, Pastor Aaron Cummings. Amen. Pastor St. Luke, Missionary Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Bless God for you. Um, That's why it's good that we're learning this. Okay, Let, let's go ahead. The victims are going to want to die but death will flee from them. Can you imagine wanting to die and death flees from you? 
most most of the time death will try to gravitate towards you but during this part time of torment when you want to die death is going to flee from you reading the detailed description of these creatures we realize john is not writing about ordinary locusts yet despite this obvious symbolism it aptly portrays a powerful enemy armed for battle with bodies like horses but faces like men the demons heads are crowned and covered with long hair they have teeth like those of lions and their skin is like a coat of mail when they fly the noise is like an army of chariots rushing by it is unnecessary for us to try to spiritualize these symbols or to interpret them in light of modern means of warfare john is heaping image upon image to force you and i to feel the horror of this judgment do you feel it real locusts do not have a king and that's there's a scripture that says that actually in proverbs 30 and 27 but this army follows the rules of satan the angel of the bottomless pit his name is destroyer the thief which is satan cometh not to steal kill and destroy um the, he cometh not but for to steal kill and to destroy real locusts have pervasive they are pervasive destroyers what does that mean pastor it means that they uh exist in or spread throughout every part of something uh thank you so much ricky they don't locusts once they're released they don't have a filter they they're going to attack everything amen everything they're going to attack everything so that's what that means by they are locusts are pervasive destroyers they're going to uh they don't have a filter they destroy everything but this particular army has an assignment they're only going to sting those who do not belong to the lord remember the world and the laws of nature are being so radically affected that one natural disaster after another will be occurring all over the world during this tribulation period there will be a shortage of food i need you to stay with me you haven't seen nothing yet you think the virus is something you haven't seen nothing the empty shelves this this ain't nothing yet uh we're not there there's not a shortage of food yet they're just uh it's just supply and demand it's just they're trying to catch up with with everything i went to the store today and tried to find just the liquid soap that we normally keep in the bathroom and on this and on our sink and all of that uh before it was it was in plenty of demand but now it's just i mean it was just plenty of supply but now because of supply and demand of everybody trying to keep these particular weapons of mass destruction uh because it, it can pick up the virus and we end up touching ourselves now you can't even find uh this this stuff this stuff is so hard uh to find there's going to be a shortage of food there's going to be a shortage of water because of the judgments we've read in the previous chapter of Revelation. And the basic essentials of life, there's going to be a shortage of all these things. Um, animals will be scurrying around, even as men are frantically searching for food. There is, of course, even the possibility of some bizarre, watch this, animal mutation resulting from the natural changes and scientific experimenting experimentation in the latter days the point is this we know better than to laugh at such prospects today and this is why i was trying to warn you all earlier on when the coronavirus first hit we were making jokes and stuff and i i went online and i immediately said stop don't do it don't make jokes because this thing is getting ready to shift and like i said not to repeat myself god bless you rob we were making jokes and posting them on Facebook. I'm talking about before they shut us down from going to church. We were laughing and making jokes and, you know, and doing all kinds of things. And I, I, I saw it before this thing even kicked in. And I said, this is not the time to be laughing and cracking jokes. You know, and now we've seen the results. And, we, and we're not done yet. Uh, we've seen the results. And, um, and there's still people. Just like there's going to be people during the tribulation period that's going to see all these judgments, and they're not going to turn to God. They're going to, they're not. The, even the fact that the church is gone, that people they know that were in the, that were in the, a part of the church is going to be wrapped up. They're not going to get it. They're not. They're not. They're still. Their hearts are going to be hardened. There's people now who are still on Facebook posting.
Corona joke. It's I'm telling you, and I know you want to kind of lighten the lighten the load, like I said last night or whatever. You want to kind of, you know, this is somebody said, but Pastor, this is my way of just kind of keep things light. No. Revelation, the book of Revelation ain't for you to keep things light. This coronavirus ain't here for you to keep things light. The church has been, is in Selah. Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, y'all going forth online, but the physical church is in Selah. This is not the moment for, for things to be light. That's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to present smoke and mirrors to, to, to keep you distracted while, while you're distracted. He'll take your head clean off. This is serious business. All right, let's go further. We shouldn't laugh at some of these things, these calamities that we see today because of what science is doing. And with genes and basic elements of life, indescribable monstrosities are very possible. And we've seen it, we've seen it, we've seen it. We've seen stuff created uh, in one place and it, and it shifts. You know how quickly a virus can spread. Uh, there is to be catastrophic destruction and devastation in the great tribulation that is coming upon the earth. It will be such a terrible time that it can only be described as a period of woe. That's why the writer, uh, the, the person in the Bible, they were saying, woe, woe, woe. That is of extreme grief, extreme distress, extreme suffering, extreme affliction, and extreme calamity. The woe judgments of God are the trumpet judgments that zero in on afflicting the bodies of the ungodly. One woe that we've read has already been covered, the demonic-like locusts. There are still two more woe judgments which are yet to fall upon the evil people of the world. World, Let's go there. Let's go to 13. Revelation 9 and 13. Let's go there. Revelation 10 and 13. I'm sorry. Let, let's go there. And the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. 14 says saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet i just said that loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates so the sixth angel which had the trumpet has been commanded to loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates the four release angels are bound at the great river Euphrates. Note the definite article here. Use, that word use. Okay, which is the. The four falling angels are four specific angels. As will be seen in the few, mo as we will see in a few moments. And they will be the four angels of high military rank. Let's go to 15. Now, let me. I'm going to mention this, but let's go to 15. These are not holy angels because, because holy angels are not bound. Okay? 15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. What were they prepared for? So they were prepared for this particular hour, for this particular day, for this particular month, for this particular year, what were they prepared for? They were prepared for to slay, watch this, the third part of men on the earth. The third part of men. The four fallen angels were loosed and they prepared to execute a judgment upon the earth. The judgment of slaying one third of the ungodly and evil population of the world. Remember, why? It's because the billions upon earth will follow and give their total allegiance and support to the Antichrist and the policies of his government. God has already set the time for his judgment. There will be an exact year, month, day, and even hour for this judgment to fall upon the ungodly and evil. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the hour is already fixed. That should give you chills right now. God isn't somewhere up in heaven said, well, let me decide. Let me kind of figure out when this is going to be. And, or, you know, or I'll just kind of see how it goes. And then I'll kind of, I'll see how the earth, how the earth maintains and how they work. Around. No, 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 baby. The hour of this particular judgment, the judgments which we already read about, the judgments which are to come, are already fixed. Let's look at verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. Verse 17 says, And thus I saw the throne, the, the horses in the vision, and them that sat upon them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. I'm going to read these last verses and we'll explain. We'll go back and explain. Just hang with, hang in with me. 15 more minutes. By these three was the third part of men killed. By fire and by smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. 19 says, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. It's amazing how this is the opposite of where we are as saints today of the power that God has given us today. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Today, before we even get to this, today, uh, we've been given power by the Holy Spirit uh, to, because the power is in our mouths. And I've come to tell you right now to give you a word of encouragement before we go any further that the power is in your mouth life and death is in the power of the tongue so either you can speak your future or you can speak your funeral either you can speak your funeral or you can speak your future life and death is in the power of the tongue so it's just amazing here that if the power of the tongue can be used for destruction, which we'll see here in, in, in this in chapel of Revelation, we can see now that because of the Holy Spirit, we can speak life. I dare you to speak life to your situation. I dare you to speak life no matter how bleak it may be. God bless you, Rose Henry. I dare you to speak life. The power is in your mouth. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, I ain't going to make it. I'm going to... Uh, I've heard people say I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna live past 20 and they die before they would be before they turn 20. You spoke it, you put it into the atmosphere. Let's go back to 19. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. Verse 20 says, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Many of us are guilty of worshiping idols uh, that cannot see, that cannot hear, that cannot walk. We've been, we've been guilty of worshiping idols. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, last verse of, of this particular chapter. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries. Watch this right here. Thank you, Rob. Triconi Tri Brooks, God bless you. Nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. So let's explain what we've already read. There will be an army of 200 million. Imagine an army of 200 million demonic spirits that are going to be let loose upon the earth. This will be the army that the four fallen angels will command as armies such as the world has never seen before. The riders will have breastplates. We read about that. 
The breastplates are fiery red and sapphire blue and sulfur, which is like brimstone, yellow. The breastplate symbolizes that they will be, watch this, indestructible. One thing about uh, as we have unfolded through, through our studies of Revelation, we understand that God has given, has, everything is for a purpose. The imagery of everything that has been discussed and has been brought out through symbolism, there is a purpose for each and everything, even what they wear and what they have on and, and what their function is and what, 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 what the color of a horse and what weapons they carry. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a purpose. And the enemy imitates God. He has a purpose for everything he tries to do in our lives. His purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. He imitates God, but in a negative way. But God has a purpose for everything. This coronavirus is for a purpose. You know, everything that happens is for a purpose. This, this time of us being sat down and stay at home is for a purpose. What's going on in your life is for a purpose. But we've got to trust God in the midst of it all. All right, let's, let's go further. The breastplate symbolizes that they will be indestructible, protected and defended as they go to war against the ungodly of the world. Man will not be able to stop them. The horses will be horrible and add terror upon terror on the ungodly. There is a purpose for judgment. What is the purpose? There's a word called repentance. When I was chastised by my dad in the cherry house and judgment was brought upon me because of my uh, destructive behavior and the things I did wrong and when I was out of order, the destructive, the, what he, the judgment, his purpose for judgment, Ben Cherry's purpose for judgment upon me was for repentance and judgment comes for repentance. So God still gives you a time for repentance. This tribulation period, as bad as it is, is still a time for repentance and is also a time for judgment for those who will not repent. I want you to remember that. Two significant points are always are already or have already been made. The deadly power of these horses in their mouths and tails is going to be in their mouths and their tails. Their power, their deadly power. Is going to be in their mouths and their tails, not their legs. Fire, smoke, and brimstone issue from their mouths and their tails are like biting serpents. They can attack men from the front as well as the rear. These are going to be some unbelievable, undescribed creatures here. I take it that this is another demonic army headed by the four angels and that all of them are today are bound by the Lord until... This particular act where God gives permission for them to be released. Um, why they, are they bound at the Euphrates River is not explained. Though the area is the cradle of civilization, which is mentioned in Genesis, the second chapter in the 14th verse. Not to mention one of the boundaries for Israel. You would think that the combination of five months of torment and then death from the smoke, the fire, the brimstone would bring men and women to their knees in repentance. But this is not going to be the case. God is upholding his holy law and vindicating his suffering people. Even a casual reading, even somebody who's casually reading Revelation 9, uh, 20 through 21, reveals the awful wickedness of mankind. Even in the midst of, the, of God's judgments. The most frightening thing about Revelation 9, we're at Revelation 9, I said 10 earlier, but Revelation 9 the most frightening thing about Revelation 9 is not the judgments that God sends, but the sins that men persist in committing sin, even as God is judging them. I, I can't imagine that kind of ignorance to be oblivious of what's going on and all these judgments, and you're still not repenting. Consider these sins that men and women will be committing during this time. They're going to be committing demon worship, which goes hand in hand with idolatry. That's going to be the leading sin during this time. 
Satan's going to be heavily at work. Satan always wanted to be worshipped. A great deal of religion will be practiced during this time, but it will be a false religion. People will worship the works of their own hands. A lot of that's been going on today. Um, they're going to be caught up. Uh, how is that? How do they uh, worship the works of their own hands in the things that they construct uh, with buildings that they construct, the machines they're able to make, the cities that they build, as well as their idols. These people are dead sinners worshiping dead gods and uh, their, their gods will not be able to help them protect them or deliver them during these times. These people will continue in being hard-headed and reject the true God and worship Satan and his idols. Murder and theft are going to be so prevalent during these days. Like, these judgments aren't enough. But murder and theft are going to be so prevalent in these days, so will various kinds of sexual immorality. The word translated sorcery in the group is, for, is called uh, pharmacia, which means the use of drugs, similar like pharmaceuticals. Drugs are often used in pagan religious rites and demon worship. As we see even today in, a, in drug culture, we can see a whole bunch of demonic practices. Mankind will be breaking the first two Mosaic commandments by making and shifting into this worshiping of idols. In the murders, they will violate, violate the sixth commandment. In the thefts, they will violate the eighth commandment. By their fornication, they will break the seventh commandment. It will be the age of lawlessness with every man doing what they think is right in their eyes. But God is still working out his plan in the midst of all this. And neither the sins of mankind nor the schemes of Satan will hinder him from accomplishing his will. Okay, so right now, y'all, as we get ready to sign off, we have come to the midpoint of the tribulation. A time during which some important events are going to take place. Revelation chapters 10 through 14 is what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. We'll start. We'll start in 10 tomorrow. Thus far, we have covered about three and a half of a seven year period, as in Daniel, the ninth chapter, 27 verse says, during this time, Antichrist began his career as a peacemaker and a special friend to Israel, but now his true character will be revealed. He will be a peace breaker and a persecutor of the people of God. Things will not look bright for God's people during this middle stage of the prophetic journey, but they will still be overcomers. Those who turn to the Lord will still be overcomers through the power of the King, of the King of the Lord of hosts. So I've come to ask you tonight, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Do you know him tonight? Are you saved? Are you rapture ready? I pray that you are. And if you're not, give him your heart tonight. Just say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I'm asking you to come into my heart. Please forgive me of all of my sins. Please forgive me of the things that I've done wrong for the things that I've done which has not been pleasing in your sight. I ask that you make me a, cre a new creature. I ask that you would, uh, I'm just giving you my heart. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me, to shed his blood for the remission of my sins, and to die and to rise on the third day with all power in his hands, just so I might be saved. I believe that he shed his blood for the remission of my sins and and just believe it ask him to come into your heart and into your life and then start to get into your word develop a relationship with him and you will discover a life that you've never had before god bless you thank you all for being with me tonight and we will see you tomorrow by the help of the lord god bless you good night